All right, everyone, Jill Stein is officially in. Yes, is the Green Party candidate for the President of the United States in the 2024 election. Joining an increasingly packed field, by the way, tangentially related, Joe Manchin has said he's sitting this one out as far as his re-election bid for the uh, Senate from West Virginia, which means the GOP is probably going to pick that seat up. Uh, that being said, um, he's definitely the top of the list for the possible no-labelers candidate that could be forthcoming. Tick, tick, tock, you're getting on towards the period where you definitely need to make a decision, and that could very well be Manchin's decision to throw his hat in the ring and say, look, you know, nominate me, at least I got name recognition, and I've got some coalition in, you know, some of the Rust Belt states. Here's my analysis, though. I don't think this does anything. I don't think that it hurts Biden. I don't think it hurts Trump. I don't think it hurts anyone. The only one which I think this probably hurts is Cornell West. Of course, he was entertaining the idea of being the Green Party candidate before. Then he decided, no, nah, I'm just going to run an independent bid. He is a dedicated far leftist, more on the intellectual left side, as is, by the way, Jill Stein, intellectual activist side. Um, and I think that they'll do the vote sharing. So I, I mean, I can't imagine that anyone that would be receptive to Jill Stein would be voting for Trump. I can't imagine that anyone on that particular left fringe would vote for Biden, although they may hold the line, a minority of them. Uh, this is like AOC's constituents, basically. Some California hippies, some New England granola manufacturers, a few wackadoodle, you know, the weird uncle at the dinner table, you know, scattered around small town America. That's basically Jill Stein's coalition. It's also the coal and, and then some New Yorkers and, and a handful of others. It's also the coalition for Cornell West. Um, these are meme candidates, effectively. So I don't think that this is going to move the metric one way or the other. My, my basic simplistic uh, analysis here is it doesn't affect literally anything. About the only thing that it affects is that you're going to see some legacy media articles melting down. Oh my God, the, the Greens are even running a candidate. Like, they, they don't basically don't exist as a party. I think they got well, a couple hundred thousand votes in the last election, all told. Like a fraction of what the Libertarian Party gets, and they barely crack a point in most states usually. And their, their, their golden moment was under uh, fucking Gary Johnson there. I think that what happens from here on out is Jill Stein is basically running a candidacy where she can go to a handful of left-wing areas. She can go talk to the hippies in San Francisco. She can go to Portland or something like that. She'll probably attack Biden um, and, and deride the Democrats and say, well, you know, they claim to be all for like workers' rights and environmentalism, but here's the laundry list of, of times that Biden has fallen short on that, like uh, new oil and, and gas drill leasing and stuff like that. Um, taking its sweet time with regards to union negotiations. She'd be wise to bring up East Palestine. That would probably be a golden ticket as far as, you know, get, getting an extra 10,000 voters nationwide, a sprinkling of people to support your campaign. I think the real loser is Cornell West. If anything, they should combine a ticket. Cornell West should latch on as the running mate or something like that. Then you have a little bit more name recognition, a little more clout. Man, maybe they can get 400,000 votes this year around. Does that really make a huge difference? No. Here, here's the other reason why. Most of the voters that would go socialist far, far left, as opposed to just far left in the conventional, hey, we hate gun sense, so people that'll chain themselves to a bulldozer, those people are relegated to a few enclaves in the country, most of them, again, which are already run by the Democratic Party considerably. The Dems don't care if they lose 10,000 votes in California. They don't care if they lose 5,000 votes in Portland, Oregon. They don't care if they lose 20 votes in Vermont. In other words, the places where Jill Stein slash Cornell West potential voters tend to be clustered are states that are generally not in play. There are a couple of exceptions. There are left-wing enclaves in New Hampshire, for example, which is a swing state. There are left-wing enclaves in Virginia, which is a slightly lean blue but effectively swing state. There it matters a little bit more, but we're talking again about a party that doesn't even crack a million votes in a general election. The, the effect is, in, in places where it would matter, the effect is very small. It's just like the Republicans, you think they worry if they lose 50 voters in Cheyenne, Wyoming to the Green Party because people liked uh, Jill Stein, the cut of her jib, so to speak? I, I admire Jill Stein for actually doing left-wing activism and putting her money where her mouth is. I mean, she's better than, like, a nimbiest Greta Thunberg. She's got that going for her. 
she's reasonably coherent. I mean, the things that she says aren't, but <laughs> the way she speaks is all right. Uh, she's sort of like hippie grandma. She's a little bit more like, like if Marianne Williamson obviously isn't going to make the cut for the Democratic Party. Uh, even if Biden croaked tomorrow, she wouldn't be nominee. I mean, she can drop and maybe she becomes the running mate for Jill Stein. Another Dem defection. Crystal grandma plus hippie activist grandma would be an intriguing ticket. By the way, then you would siphon a few Democratic votes. It's not like there aren't a few Democratic voters that really, really like Marianne Williamson. You'd probably get a couple hundred thousand. And they might actually be, it might be just enough to count. And have Cornell West as Secretary of State. You'll have a, common, a, a commie ticket, basically. Communist Party USA would, be, would stand down and say, well, you know, that comes close enough to the mark. It's uh, several stepping stones towards our goals, and we'll just take what we can get. We've decided to endorse the Greens for the first time or something. It'd be very, very interesting. Now, Jill Stein's not going to move the, the metric, the needle of the race at all. It's, uh, in one way or the other, some people are like, well, it's bad news for Biden. I don't think so. Again, very small number of voters, very heavily clustered in states you can't really lose unless something absolutely catastrophic happens, in which case, you know, the election will be thrown in a basically a clean sweep. It'll be like, you know, Reagan's re-election bid or something like that, or, or Nixon, uh, with a near clean sweep in both cases. By the way, the two closest things that you had to clean sweep elections where every state went for one candidate or the other effectively were both won by Republicans. So <laughs> keeping that in mind, when people are writing off Donald Trump, I think they got another thing coming. But this won't be of any help to Trump. No detriment to anyone. No help to anyone. I think this is her third run. Um... You know, chain yourself to more bulldozers and deliberately get arrested just for media attention because they're not going to give it to you for very long. They're just going to say, oh, another old also ran has jumped into the race. The Jared, they'll write an article about gerontocracy. Can't they get some fresh talent in the Green Party? They're supposed to represent the vanguard of the youthful, vibrant left, which is no longer really a thing. But uh, mo most of them, uh, a bunch of boomers at this point, I think. Boomers all sold out and became socialists after fighting it all of their lives, which uh, was a very unfortunate side effect of mutually assured destruction. That's about all. Peace out.